Welcome to Biology at Ease. This video is part 4 of Life Processes lecture series. Till now I have explained two life processes, nutrition and respiration. Now in this video I will be explaining the process of transportation. Transportation in general means carrying substances from one place to another. Similarly in biology, transportation is a life process in which various substances inside the body like food materials, waste products, hormones, metabolic gases are transported from one part of the body to the other part through various means of transportation systems. In plants, short distance transportation occurs by a process called diffusion. Pores present on certain parts of the plant helps in exchange of gases. These pores are known as stomata. For example, stomata present on the leaves helps in transportation of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the leaf part of the plant. In plants with woody stems, stomata are absent and instead of stomata, the pores are known as lenticels which helps in transport of gases. So lenticels and stomata helps in short distance transport of materials in plants. For long distance transport, plants have two special type of tissues which are known as xylem and phloem. Xylem helps in conduction of water and minerals in different parts of the plants whereas phloem is responsible for the conduction of food materials in plants. Now let's have a look upon the structure of xylem and phloem. Xylem helps in carrying water and minerals in a plant. There are four types of cells which are present in xylem tissue. These are xylem fibers, xylem parenchyma, tracheids and vessels. Xylem parenchyma is the only living component of the xylem tissue. Rest all the three components of xylem that is xylem fibers, tracheids and vessels are dead. Xylem vessels and tracheids are the conducting elements of xylem which means these two are the components of xylem which helps in carrying water and minerals in a plant. Xylem vessels are long tube which acts as a drain pipe and helps in transporting water and minerals from the root region to the other parts of the plant. These xylem vessels have cell wall which is made up of cellulose and lignin and the presence of the lignin in the cell wall of xylem provides strength to the stem part of the plant where the xylem vessels are present. The ends of the xylem vessel are open so that the xylem vessels can connect with each other for the conduction of water and minerals. There are regions in the xylem vessel where cell wall is thin and these regions are known as pits. Xylem vessels are the main conducting elements in flowering plants. In the flowering plants, both vessels as well as tracheids are present and both helps in conduction of water and minerals but the main conducting elements are vessels. Whereas in non-flowering plants, vessels are absent and only tracheids are present. So tracheids helps in conduction of water and minerals. These tracheids do not have open ends like xylem but there are small pores present on the surface of the tracheids which are known as pits and these pits allow the transport of water and minerals. Now there is a mechanism which shows how water and minerals are transported from the root region of the plant to the various other parts like stem and leaves. This mechanism is known as transpiration pull theory and this theory was given by two scientists Dixon and Jolly. According to this theory there are three forces which are responsible for conduction of water and minerals in a plant but before coming to that topic let me first explain you four words that are endodermis, epidermis, root xylem and root cortex. Now these are the roots of your plant. There are epidermal cells present in the root which are known as root hair. Now the layer of cells surrounding the root hair is known as epidermis. So suppose these are your root hair and the layer of cells surrounding the root hair is epidermis. The xylem present inside the root hair or the epidermal cells of root is known as root xylem. So this is your root xylem. And the layer of cells surrounding the root xylem is known as endodermis. The part of the root between endodermis and epidermis is called root cortex. So these are your root hair. The layer of cells surrounding the root hair is epidermis. Inside the root hair, the xylem is known as root xylem. The layer of cells surrounding the root xylem is endodermis. And between epidermis and endodermis, the part of the root is known as root 
cortex. Now let's see how water and minerals absorbed by the root of the plant is then conducted to other parts of the plant. This is the diagram showing the conduction of water and minerals in plants. The water containing the dissolved minerals which together forms sap is absorbed by the root hairs of the plant. The absorbed water plus mineral first reaches the epidermis of the root hair. From epidermis, the water then passes to root cortex. From root cortex, it passes to endodermis and then finally it passes to root xylem. The root xylem from the roots of the plant then carries the water and minerals to the stem region and from the stem, the water passes to other parts of the plant like leaves. So this is how water and minerals are transported by xylem tissue in plants. The three forces which helps in transportation are transpiration, cohesion and adhesion. Transpiration is a process of loss of water from the leaves of the plant. The leaves of a plant contains tiny pores which are known as stomata. And water is continuously evaporated from these stomata. So there is a loss of water in the leaf region of the plant. To compensate this loss, there is a need to supply water continuously to this region. So the lack of water in the leaf region creates a suction pull that helps in pulling the water in the upward direction that is from the soil or root region of the plant to the stem and leaves. This is how transpiration helps in conduction of water. To allow the continuous continuous flow of water and minerals in the upward direction in a plant, cohesion and adhesion are responsible. Cohesion refers to the force of attraction between the water molecules. So, due to this force of attraction between the water molecules, a breakage is not created between the water molecules during the conduction process. Adhesion is the force of attraction between water molecules and the xylem vessels. So, this force of attraction allows continuous flow of water and minerals from the roots of the plant plant to the stem and the leaves part. This is how water and minerals gets transported in plant. Now let's see how food gets transported to different regions of the plant. The tissue which is responsible for transportation of food in plants is known as phloem. Unlike xylem which helps in conduction only in the upward direction, phloem transports the food in all the directions that is it transports the food to all the parts of the plant where there is requirement of the food. Now let's have a look upon the structure of phloem and let's see how phloem helps in conduction of the food. Transport of food in plants takes place with the help of phloem tissue which contains four different types of cells, sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. Phloem fibers are the non-living component of the phloem tissue. Rest all the three components that is sieve tubes, Phloem parenchyma, companion cells are the living cells present in phloem. Sieve tubes are the conducting channels of phloem which means sieve tubes are the component of the phloem which helps in conduction of food in the plants. Now the ends of the sieve tubes are partially open. They have small pores which allows the transportation of food from one part of the plant to the other part. Now unlike xylem which transports the water and minerals only in the upward direction, the sieve tube tubes transports the food in upwards as well as downward direction. The food is prepared in the leaf region of the plant. After the preparation of food that is sugar, the food is then loaded into the sieve tubes of the phloem tissue. The water also enters the sieve tube and the pressure inside the sieve tubes gets increased. And since materials move from high pressure to low pressure, the food inside the sieve tubes move to all the regions where there is less pressure or where there is requirement of food or lack of food. So this is how phloem transports food material to different regions of the plant from the leaves where the food is prepared. So this is all about the process of transportation in plants. Let's quickly revise everything. Transportation is the process of carrying materials from one region of the plant to the other region where there is the lack of that material. Conduction of water and minerals takes place with the help of tissue called xylem tissue. It has two conducting elements xylem vessels and tracheids. Tracheids are the conducting elements of the xylem tissue in non-flowering plants whereas in flowering plants both tracheids as well as xylem vessels are present but xylem vessels are the main conducting elements. Conduction of food material takes place with the help of phloem tissue and sieve tubes are the conducting elements of the phloem tissue which carry 
release the food from one part of the plant to the other part. So this is all about the process of transportation in plants. I'll be explaining the process of transportation in human beings in my next video. I hope you're clear with the content. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.